Grace and peace to you on this day as we gather together for worship on this Sunday, August 9th. Welcome to worship as we again delve even further into the book of Psalms, that kind of rich history of Psalms that tells us that there are words that we can sing and praise to God in every season that we find ourselves in. As we gather for worship, we also want to welcome and invite uh, you to be a part of some other activities that are happening as a part of our community of faith here at Roseville Lutheran Church. This Tuesday, we'll begin our three-week series on Tuesday evenings centered around um, the 1966 documentary, A Time for Burning. A Time for Burning discusses uh, the, the systematic racism that is happening at that time and in that place, but it is certainly also a conversation that we wish to be a part of here at Roseville Lutheran. You can register for this event on our website, Tuesday evening, starting this Tuesday, August 11th at 7 o'clock p.m. And then also an invitation to join us for our annual meeting on Sunday, August 23rd at 10 a.m. Again, you have to pre-register for this event, and you can do so by going to our website. It'll be part of a Zoom conversation, and we'd love to have your voice as we not only look over next year's budget, but also look at the nominations for council and other committees as well. Again, welcome to worship on this day. We come together today to give our thanks and praise to God, whose truths and grace are revealed to us. We come today to listen to the word of the Lord. We come today to hear his word in language of the soul. We come today to worship the Lord our God. So we gather to give God our thanks and praise. We come together today. Our reading today is from Psalm 150. Praise the Lord. Praise God in his sanctuary. Praise him in his mighty firmament. Praise him for his mighty deeds. Praise him according to his surpassing greatness. Praise him with trumpet sound. Praise him with lute and harp. Praise him with tambourine and dance. Praise him with strings and pipe. 
Praise him with clanging cymbals. Praise him with loud clashing cymbals. Let everything that breathes praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Grace and peace to you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. When I was growing up in the small town of Matamidi, Minnesota, there was this ritual that played out at the beginning of summer every single year. Every single year, the fifth graders that were gonna be sixth graders the next year brought home their new instruments that they were going to be learning how to play to begin sixth grade band. This was a ritual that had been building for some time as the fifth graders had listened to older students come in and listen to a trombone or a trumpet or an oboe or heard the rat-tat-tat of a snare drum. No matter what though, the last two days before fifth grade was over, all of the students were handed their instrument and brought it home with them. Now, when they received the instrument, we didn't have any sort of, any sort of knowledge about how to play these instruments. They were just kind of given to us. And so this ritual happened not only in our street, but in streets up and down the neighborhoods, where all of a sudden, all these fifth grade students were just loudly blasting their instruments. Houses were set close to each other, and on our street alone, there was probably about 20 kids within five years of each other. And so every year, there was at least two or three of us that had received an instrument. And for that first week of summer, you would hear the loud blaring of a trumpet or a trombone, or maybe as you walked up and down the street, you'd hear that low oompa oompa of the tuba, or the rat-a-tat-tat of a snare drum. The neighbors were always happy when one of us picked the flute as our instrument of choice. But what happened is we didn't really know how to play these instruments. And how exciting is it just to kind of blow air through a horn with no sort of music to come out of it. And so maybe occasionally through the summer you would hear someone pick up their instrument, but by and large they sat in the corner growing dust until the sixth grade year began and we would also begin our instruction on the instrument. But it was a cacophony of sound and today's Psalm, Psalm 150, also has this cacophony of all of these instruments lending their voice and lending their sound to kind of this greater call to praise that the psalmist is encouraging us to participate in. We are in this sermon series about the Psalms, and here we are discussing the Psalms of Praise. Psalm 150 is a short one. It's at the very, very end of the book of Psalms, and in six short verses, we are told how this sound of praise should appear. And again, it's kind of like this building up of this greater sound that's gonna just kind of blast from all parts of the world. It begins first with those verses of just the sound of a trumpet. And then we are told on top of the trumpet, there shall be the sound of lute and harp. And next, there's not only tambourine and canastas, but dance as well. And then on top of all of that, the psalmist says, and then the strings and the pipes, and there's gonna be clanging cymbals, and as if to stress the point home, loud clanging cymbals. It's as if, as if with each additional instrument, the crescendo of praise gets louder and actually less controlled. I think you can imagine what that sound must be like. And the psalmist has actually been building up to this moment for quite some time. In Psalm 145, we hear that first introduction of the first symbol crash. But in fact, if you go back all the way to the beginning of the Psalms, this crescendo of giving our God, our Creator, all of our praise began with the very first words. 
over and over in the book of Psalms, it is almost as if the writers are saying, praise the Lord at all times. Praise the Lord with everything that you have. Grab the drum and praise the Lord. Grab the frying pan and a spoon and praise the Lord. The salt shaker, the rake and shovel, your voice, your hands, even your feet. Get up and praise the Lord. Imagine what your neighborhood would sound like if everyone at one time grabbed up their instrument of choice, either a real instrument or just something that made sound or lended their cries of laughter and started singing all at the same time what your neighborhood would sound like. That's the type of praise that the psalmist wants us to incorporate into our daily lives. The using of the gifts that we have been given and the things at our disposal to stop and to give God praise in whatever ways that we can with whatever gifts that we have. Give God praise no matter what. And he might ask, no matter what? Even during times of doubt or uncertainty and times of great mourning, are we still supposed to lend our voice to give God praise. Psalm 150 in the lectionary usually creeps up in the post-Easter season when it seems probably the most easiest to give God praise. We have just kind of had the communal shout of he is risen, he is risen indeed. But the post-season story in which we find Psalm 150 usually being called into, into the lectionary is also a time when Thomas doubts. It is also a time when the disciples are persecuted. And yet we are reminded, even in the times of doubt or persecution or uncertainty, give God your praise in all moments and all days and in all times and seasons. It doesn't mean it has to sound beautiful, kind of like those first sounds that echoed throughout our neighborhood on those last few days of the fifth grade year. We just gave it what we had. It doesn't mean that it has to sound absolutely joyful. Sometimes we give God praise in our cries and in our weeping. Sometimes we give God praise, yes, even in the silence beside the bedside of one who is dying. We don't want our prayers to pause for our praise to stop. We acknowledge, as the psalmist does, that praise happens each and every day in different ways, in the days in which we live, in the ways in which we live our life. Psalm 150, in fact, is a part of many faiths' daily prayer life. Maybe if we incorporated Psalm 150 into our daily prayers too, we would be able to lift our voice and sing into the everyday moments of life, into the day and day worries of lost sleep, the day-to-day -day worries even of bills or unemployment or injustice. Because this Psalm does not tell us exactly why to praise, but how to praise. How are we to praise God? We are to praise God with everything that we have, with our laughter, but even our tears or stuttered speech. How do we praise God? We praise God with our bodies and our breath. We praise the God who created us, who breathed life first into us. How do we praise God? Together. We lend our voices, our laughter, and our cries together. Previous to the book of Psalms is the book of Job. You may know Job as that suffering servant who suffered greatly 
And through the course of the book, we understand that Job has lost his children, his livelihood, his health, his wealth, everything. And there's this long discourse between Job and his friends and, and the laying of the blame, and Job is miserable. But at the very end of the book of Job, in that final chapter, as a prelude indeed to the book of Psalms, Job lifts his voice up, even as he sits on the ash heap, and he sings a song of praise to God. Even in his anguish, and his song of praise is very simple. Job basically sings out to God, you are God and I am not. All of creation is the work of your hand. The mountains sing your praise. The oceans sing your praise. May I also sing my praise to you. With hands, with voice, with breath, with dance, we are invited in to give God our thanks and praise each and every day and each and every season. And for that, we give God our thanks and praise. Amen. sound of the trumpet, praise God with the lute and the harp, praise God with the timbrel and dancing, praise God wherever you bountiful mercies, for God fulfills our needs. Praise ye the Lord, everybody, hallelujah, everybody praise the Lord. Praise ye the Lord, everybody, hallelujah, everybody praise the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. Let us pray. Holy Spirit, Lord of creation, the one who created all that is and is a part of the creative and redeeming work of all that will be. Lord, we come together and even though we are not gathered as one, our voices are lifted up as one in praise to you. Lord, you know where we are and the ways in which we worry or work and the places in which we walk. Lord, you know exactly where we are and you hear us. 
And in that hearing, we are asked to also hear your blessings for us. And Lord, in the hearing of the blessings that you have given us, may we join our voices and give our praise and thanks to you. May we hear the praise that your whole creation sings in the sigh of a tree as it bends against the wind, in the lap of a wave along the shore, in the chirp of a bird as it flits from tree to tree. May we add to this beautiful cacophony of praise our voice as well. May we praise you not only in times of great joy, but also in times of despair. For in our weeping, we come to know you. And in our laughter, we also come to hear you. Lord, bless all people. Bless those who are anxious about what is to come. Bless those who are sick or in need of healing. Bless our teachers and students as they prepare for yet another of year of uncertainty. Bless us as a nation. Bless us to be your people wherever we are, so that we too may join our voices together as a people of God in giving you our thanks and praise. Amen. And hear us as we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Receive this blessing for God's goodness and generosity in giving us all that we need, may we go out and give praise to God. In every circumstance of life, in good times and in bad, let us give our praise to God. In our plans and our work for ourselves and for others, let us give our praise to God. In every thought and word and deed, may we give thanks to God. And now may you go in peace and serve the Lord. And together we say, thanks be to God. Amen.